Hello Internet, I'm Guy. Today I'm looking at the base for my uh, Stirling engine and I have decided to skip using this component here, the whole cast base. It's a sand casting. Uh, I don't like this texture, I don't like the look of the thing, I don't like the way that the uh, heater will sit right there. So what I'm going to do is get rid of that, use a piece of wood, I've got a nice piece of walnut here, and then mount this part here. Instead of mounting it on those two risers, I'm going to make a couple of little cylindrical risers and I'm going to detail it out to, with little ridges like that to make it look interesting. And then I'm going to use some brass right here to support the, uh, the flywheel. So that will hold this up right here. So let me jump right in. I'm starting with a piece of aluminum rod stock that is more than long enough for my needs and I'm just checking to make sure I have enough stick out there. Tighten it down in the jaws and then face off the end as is tradition. Takes a couple of passes because that was a gnarly cut. And then of course center drilling drilling and tapping to get one end all set up for a 632 bolt, which is what is called out for in the plans to secure the uh, section that is mounting on top of this post. So then I'm setting up my length again, make sure I know how long I need to go, and then I overshoot deliberately. Okay, well that came out pretty well. This looks really pretty. I'm going to put this other bolt in here and twist that on. And then I can tighten that down. I think these are going to look really great. It kind of ties in visually between the, the fins here and the, the legs. So that's, uh, that's pretty. A lot better looking than that, I think. Thanks for watching. Um, I just wanted to remind you that these videos take me about 10 hours to produce. And so if you can show me a little support by giving me a like or subscribing or give me a super like, you see the icon down below that is a little heart with a dollar sign in it, you can give me a small contribution just for this video. And also in the description below, you can subscribe via Patreon to support my channel. So I appreciate anything you can contribute to keep my channel going. I'm still a new channel. I only started uh, this year, early in 2022. So if you can give me some support, I really appreciate it. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. So for the flywheel supports here, the bearings are going to sit right in there. And it turns out that piece of brass that I had sitting around is about the right height. So I'm just going to use that height, cut this off to 0 0.750, and uh, make two of those, one on each side. So I'm lowering my half-inch carbide cutter onto the parallel so I can zero my DRO and then set up a 0.75 uh, dimension to dimension this. I'm not going to show you finishing all of the dimensioning there. Same thing here, just cleaning up the ends. Okay, so I've got these roughed into shape. I cleaned them up on the belt sander to give them a vertical grain finish. And it turns out these are uh, 0.125 thick. So now I'm going to machine this down to 0.125 so that this will sit just a little proud right there, uh, like that. And uh, that's the next step. I've got both pieces in the vise to balance out the pressure and force, gripping force in the vise. And then I'm going to set up to mill that surface down. But first I need to index the edge of the cutter to the back edge of the brass. So I'm just going to move my cross slide over a little bit and then there I can see where it's, the, the parallel is pulling away from the brass. Now I can stop and zero my DRO and now I know how deep I want to go to get that 0.125. So now I'm getting a little carried away here with my new carbide cutter and cutting a lot deeper than I should and I'm still learning speeds and feeds. Uh, you know I freely admit I'm an amateur machinist and by the way notice I'm not cutting the full depth and that was just a mistake and an oversight there. So yeah, it's chattering and struggling, and then I learn, oh yeah, maybe I should speed up the uh, spin rate here of the cutter, and that helps a little bit. And maybe in the future I probably shouldn't try and take off quite as much. But the overall shape here is what I want. I want that curved shape at the bottom. And then I go, oh wait a minute, hold on a second. I um, hmm, should have been cutting all the way down. So back up a bit. 
back it off a little bit and do a few more passes and again I'm cutting off a bit more than I should but this carbide cutter is my first big carbide cutter and I really like it. The spiral cut cuts really well. It's wicked sharp and works beautifully with brass. So yeah, and this is my final uh, skim pass there I think. Oh yeah, one more final skim pass to get the, the last couple of thou off just to clean it up and make it look nice. So there, pushing into that corner, boy, that, that cutter is struggling, but uh, brass is such a forgiving material that it's really a joy to work with. Beautiful. So now I have to drill the holes for the ball bearings to go in there, and I've got my dimension called out from my DRO from the end of the vise there, and centering drill, of course, and then... Uh, what I like to do is put a magic marker mark in the step drill to know where I need to go. Uh, it's a really helpful trick, so you can see it when it's spinning. The thing I didn't plan on, ominous foreshadowing music, is I didn't leave enough depth there. So I'm going to end up bottoming out the drill bit into the vise, and you'll see that happening shortly. Yep, now I'm drilling into the bottom of the vise. Not a good thing to do, but I guess we all do it at some point or other. So, on to the next larger Irwin step drill. These are Irwin step drills that I've had for probably 30 or 40 years. The original ones went before they went out of patent and everyone has them. So I go down just enough to leave that chamfer in there, which I really like, and it needs a little bit of deburring after that, as you can see, but that, that makes such a nicely finished hole. It's really precise. So the little bearing just kind of just snaps in there very nicely, very satisfying. So I'm just going to whip through the other one there since it's already there. Um, yeah, I didn't actually use my DRO, I just used the scribe line on that one, and it would have been ideal if I'd set it up to do a DRO measurement to get the exact dimension from the bottom, but uh, I think I can work with this. So now I realize, oh, oops, uh, it's not deep enough. I've got to go deeper there. So I'm going to try a couple of things here. Um, the fly cutter is not optimal, but I thought I'd give it a shot. You know, what the heck, I'm, I'm going to keep learning here. The new motor that I put on my machine is incredibly powerful at low RPMs. But, uh, as you can see, I start chewing into this brass and, oh my goodness, everything's just jiggling around. That's just not going to work. So, plan B, as you see, I did a trial cut. I'm going to go straight down with the fly cutter. And, as anyone who's a machinist knows more than I do, this is not a good plan either. Um, partly because the long bottom edge of that cutter isn't really cutting. So you can see I'm making kind of a V groove in there, and eventually I decide this isn't working out so well either. But it takes me a while. You see the, the head is jumping around now. It's just not, not really doing it. So back to plan A, using my big half-inch carbide uh, cutter head, and just same, same plan, only different. Back to plan A. What a great cutter. Uh, carbide tools, I'm a huge fan. So that came out pretty good. So now I'm checking the fit and clearance of this component and that will fit just fine. So here it is. I put the little bearing in there, stand it up, and that will go right up in there. So set it up on a couple of blocks. Of course I'm going to have to cut a slot in the wood base for the flywheel. But that's looking pretty good. Thanks for watching and stay tuned or subscribe to catch my next episode of this construction process.